He just ring girled it. Ring girled it. We need a ring girl. Have instead you not of, seen, instead it, like of the, me like holding it, we need the a The UFC ring fights or any of those or MMA fights or, or boxing, you get the ring girl walks around, holds up the round it is. Yeah. We need one of those, we need Fred. One of those. Yeah. 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 All right. Enough of that. So now let's get this stuff, stuff we could actually put on the camera. <laughs> All right. Five, four, three, two, one, roll it. Hello, Sprawlock Nation. Another glorious day here in Chattanooga, Tennessee. I got my ding dong friend over here. <laughs> it's been one of those days, people. I'm just going to be honest with you. We have fun with what we do, and I've kept him laughing in between takes and in between walking from studio to studios. It was either ding dong or ho ho. I wasn't sure which one of the, one of the cupcakes I was going with, but ding dong it was. <laughs> I'd rather be a cupcake than a snowflake. <laughs> <laughs> so what are we talking about today, Josh? At this point, I, I don't know anymore. Mm. Uh, so, we, we were supposed to go with aggregate blending, but I think we went somewhere and we jumped off the deep end and hopefully Fred cuts a couple of those things out because well, uh, we're... Yeah, yeah. Well, nope. See, what's, what, what has motivated me today is I got an email this morning from a guy in South Carolina telling me that our videos were a hoot. And here in the South, there is no higher praise than being told that, that your videos are a hoot. So, well, doggy, can that be something? We're trying to ham it up a bit and enjoy ourselves, probably more than we should. But today we're talking about aggregate blending. Aggregate blending. How to blend things, much like his, I won't say comedic relief, more just something. And. <laughs> Mine a little more straight-laced yeah. <laughs> approach. Yeah, we, we blend one, them together and it kind of works. Yeah. At one time we thought about having, you know, a funny guy and a straight guy, but it seems like that we both... I think that was a television series called The Odd Couple. Yeah, it might have been. Yeah, so aggregate blending. Um, this is actually a subject that I'm very passionate about. I love talking about aggregate blending and it all goes back to when I was a 17-year-old kid in North Georgia in Dalton. A guy by the name of Jim Shillstone came by with his son, Jay, and introduced me to their software product, Shillstone Aggregate Blending. And I had no clue up to that point that you even could worry about your particle sizes and where they fit and all You're that. You were just throwing rock and sand in and hope it worked out. Huh? Well, no, not, not necessarily. I was running gradations. I was a lab assistant and I was doing things like running gradations to make sure they met yeah, but just ASTM C33. Yeah, but what I said was you were just throwing them in there. I didn't say you didn't make sure that they yeah. met the, the standards, but... But rock was rock, sand was sand in my mind before that chance meeting. Then yeah, that's how you get Rocky mixes. Exactly. 1991, maybe, is when that was happening. Um, and then it was like a light bulb went off. You can vary the sizes of your aggregates, the amounts of your aggregates, and even aggregate shape can factor in to how that blend behaves in a concrete mix. A lot of people think of aggregates, coarse and fine aggregates, as fillers in a concrete mix. I have found that the definition for filler is an inert material that doesn't contribute anything to the mixture. Well, like dust from rocks and things of that yeah, nature but that's it, not really doing anything besides filling in space. But what I found is that through a lot of work figured out that aggregates are the vital skeleton to the concrete mix that provides so much of the performance of that concrete mix. It, it gives structure to the concrete mix that the binder, the cement, and the cementitious materials can then interact with to produce a strong, durable concrete mix. Pause that thought for just a minute. Mm -hmm. Let's think about it. So we're talking about blending, we're talking about but I want to ask some simple questions. Please. If we get a single rock that's fairly consistent, cross the board, same gradation over and over with 67 or 57 or whatever you want to look at. Yep. It's not got any variations. Okay. And then you get just a one sand really heavily fits in there, but you're, you're still not blended as well as you could get it. And you're putting five bag mix, mm -hmm. what's that doing to the cement? 
versus if you have a better blended. So you got poorly graded and well graded. Yeah. And you're starting to look at your cement factor, your paste factor. Yeah. I think that is essential for us to discuss it as well. It absolutely is because it, it, really the the best way of illustrating what it is that you're talking about that I've ever seen is the graphic from Portland Cement Association that they had in their design and control book, which was of the different beakers with the different with a single size material here, and then you fill in the voids with some some sand here, and then you, over here you've got water. So you continually have voids that you're combating in the concrete mix because those gaps in the structure of the aggregate blend right. is gonna be, have to be filled with something and it's filled with cement or cementitious material because you gotta put something in those gaps and if it's not filled and all the puzzle pieces don't fit together properly. It's more cement going in there. It's more cement go in a gap graded mix, it's gonna take more cement to perform. So basically the PCA thing is, is essentially get you a jar, throw a lot of rock in there. Is it full? No. no. Throw some sand there, shake it in, is it full now? Then you get some water in there, get your cement paste. Then you're getting it filled up. But from Not an onset, when, well, from an onset. Yes. You use but, our stuff to fill it well, up completely. Well, but for the, for the beginning of it, simplistic nature, people are going to say, with that rock in there, that jar is full. Yes, they will. Because they're not viewing the void space. Yes. And when you add the sand, you're seeing it, and then you start connecting that, that, hey, you're trying to fill all those voids. Yep. As much as possible, unless it's outdoor concrete, in which case, kind of want to be able to let it freeze and thaw and you don't want it completely yeah, filled necessarily right, right. but so that's why we get air entrainment and things like that in there yes sir but uh, if you the better you can fill those voids the better your concrete is going to perform and, and from a durability perspective from a from a workability perspective when it's fresh finishability all of those things are dictated by your aggregate package and how all those particles fit together to make a nice puzzle so if you have more questions and, and would like to learn more, there's a lot of great resources out there. Uh, Tyler Layett, Oklahoma State, put out, puts out some great stuff on aggregate blending. Um, there's other folks that do a lot of aggregate blending work um, that can take you to the next level with your concrete mix designs. If you've got any questions, hit us up, like, subscribe, and reach out. Thank you. Thank you.